Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Insert Coin to Begin Presents Let's Play the Show, where we uh, answer some questions that are gaming related and relate to us in our gaming experiences. Why is it quiet time? I don't know. <laughs> Joining us this week, back from the dead. He's, he claims he wasn't dead, but I, I, it, he kind of looks like a zombie to me. It's Fuzzy hey. at Fuzzwad. And returning again this week is at Bobby F. J. Town, both contributors Yo, to InsertCoinToBegin.com, the website we all work on and provide gaming news for gamers, by gamers, in gamers. Around, around gamers. Yeah, around gamers. See, if you're watching the video, that's our lovely website. The graphic was made by Bobby. Very, very, I should make a new one soon. Very nice stolen images, by the way. <laughs> and in case you have never tuned into the show, we answer a series of questions each week, each increasing in the length of discussion, or so it should be, or we uh, go on a tangent of naming Lego-themed things. <laughs> Are you just inserting random name words? I am. Lego Charlie Brown and the Great Pumpkin. Oh, nice. Uh, just, yeah, like that. All right, and as always, we start with the same question. It is, what are you playing and did you play the challenge? Apparently, last week's challenge was Snood, even though we never officially announced it. Um, I didn't know that. I didn't play the challenge. I will make that up later. Uh, let, let's, let's start with Bobby. Bobby, what are you playing and did you play the challenge? This week, I played the Forza Horizon demo. Um, it was really good. Uh, it's it's kind of like uh, Forza meets um, uh, Burnout Paradise or Burnout uh, 3, which were some of my favorite games. Um, I played Retro City Rampage for the PS3. I didn't even know it was out until I saw it was out. And it's a it's an 8-bit Grand Theft Auto clone that has every single 8-bit video game or 80s movie reference you can imagine in it. It's amazing. Uh I'm going to have to buy it. I just played the demo for it. And I bought Naughty Bear Trouble in Paradise for Xbox 360 for Xbox Live Arcade. Because I played the first one, didn't really like it, but this one is a lot better, I think. I'm going to have to have you explain that game because it just sounds uh, fun. You, you, you are a demonic, twisted teddy bear <laughs> who wasn't invited to go on vacation with other teddy bears. So you have to kill them. <laughs> Naturally. Wow. Yeah. Because um, that's a story. Because of logic. I, I was playing this game, and, and okay. the object is to collect. You can, you can steal their um, costumes that they're wearing. Um, I stole the bellhops costume, and you can like pretty much hide from everybody and just walk up to them and grab them. Uh, I shoved a teddy bear's face into a lawnmower. Um, I shoved one into a refrigerator and froze them. Uh, hit one with a sledgehammer. Wow, I'm in. Uh, yeah, it's it's yeah. it's it's very twisted. But this this version is is a lot better than the first one. I thought, and there's a lot more stuff to collect this time around. So it's it's worth it's worth fifteen dollars, and not the original forty dollars the the first game was. <laughs> so said it's naughty time. <laughs> yeah, and it's 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 a very British British game too. Very British sense of humor in it. All right, Fuzz, what did and, you play? Oh, and I did play the, tri the challenge this week, too, what, just, it, just so you know. What was your score? <clears throat> Four, 451, I yeah, think. I didn't do very good. That was pathetic. Yeah, it is. It, it, it's it's not a bad game, though. It's it's fun. I just didn't have time to play it much, but yeah. Eh. All right, Fuzz. Um, I, I'm going to go ahead and assume that you uh, you still play video games. Uh, <laughs> when I have time. <laughs> Uh, which sadly my Xbox hasn't been turned on in the past week and a half, except for once to use Netflix. Oh, oh wow. But What'd to you kind of bridge that gap at this. Ooh, <laughs> fancy. That's a big controller. It's a Nexus. I know. Uh, I, uh, crap, I hit the wrong thing. <laughs> what, what, what are you playing? Uh, that was... Spider-Man and Venom Maximum Carnage. I love that game. One of my favorite games as a kid. I played through the entire thing because it has a game genie built in, so made life <laughs> easy, except for that part where you have to die, and I couldn't figure that out for an hour. 
I just kept fighting the same fat guy over and over. <laughs> but yeah, I've been playing all the old uh, Marvel as a uh, Super Nintendo games uh, since I found a really nice emulator that actually works. There were a few others that I tried, but the Game Genie didn't work, and that just made it difficult because the fact that it's on-screen buttons, it you just don't have the same kind of control and feel that you do when you're holding a physical controller, so it that's a huge hindrance in the game. But I've been playing that, and then also uh, Stickman Cliff Diving because it's simple and addicting gotcha. and somewhat frustrating, too. And that uh, that's going to be this week's challenge. Yep. Uh, I just downloaded it. You can get it in your Google Play Store. And if Sorg will uh, check out the iTunes, the App Store. No? Will you check out the App Store on your iPhone and let me know if and how much it is in there? And we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, I, I was a bad, bad gamer this week. Um... I, my schedule has been packed. I haven't had enough time to play video games, mostly because of Sorg and work. Um, no, I am blaming you. Uh, but I, I played uh, R-Type uh, Jetpack Joy Ride on my Android, and I've been playing a lot of uh, <laughs> card games on my on my Android. Last week it was Uno. This week it's Phase Ten. Hey, um, Uno is fun. Yeah. So. Uh, is it? How much? 99 cents. 99 cents in your iTunes store? Is there a demo? Uh, I or... see. Okay. Uh, so if you want to play the game on your I on your iPhone, it'll cost you a buck. Um, but on Android, it's free, suckers. Um, yeah, so I didn't really get to play that much games. Um, however, I'll be making up for that here shortly when Assassin's Creed 3 comes out, because... I specifically used PTO time and took off five days worth of work to uh, <laughs> to play through that game. Uh, however, I was a, a very responsible adult when it came to purchasing that game. Uh, I had the money in my pocket, and I did not order the uh, the Grand Pumbaa uh, special edition that comes with the, the flag and the belt <laughs> buckle and all of that. Oh, why don't you want the belt buckle? Come on now. I I want the flag. I <laughs> offered I offered Sorg sixty bucks during Awesome Cast to sell me the flag and the belt buckle if he was to pick that up. If I can find someone willing to put down one hundred and twenty dollars, I will give them sixty dollars for the flag and the belt buckle. That's all I want from it. So there, yeah. If anyone in the chat room wants to sell me a, an Assassin's Creed uh, 13 stars flag or a belt buckle. Did you get your colonial hat yet? No, not yet. Um, you should. Hey, a favorite PlayStation 1 game. Uh, I'm going to go with Parappa the Rapper. Um, it, it's pretty much the only game on PlayStation 1 worth playing. There, Punch, I said it. Kick. I said it. What? I said it. <laughs> um, yeah, it, punch, it was, punch, kick. It was an amazing game for the time and what it was. Um, if you've never played Proper the Rapper, I'm not sure why you're listening to this show, <laughs> honestly. Um, but y you should definitely run out and play Proper the Rapper. Bobby? Uh, I'm going to have to go with uh, Destruction Derby 2, which was like one of my all-time all favorite games. Uh it was it was uh, burnout before burnout was burnout. Uh, the graphics weren't that great, as with all PlayStation games. Um, but it, it was a fun little game, and the the damage on the cars was was pretty neat. Uh, the destruction derbies were fu were fun, as well as the races. Um, another favorite of mine was Pocket Fighter by Capcom. Um, it was Darkstalkers characters and Street Fighter characters micro sized. And they would like transform into different things when they were fighting. It was it was so fun. Uh, I I miss that game. I, I think it's available on the uh, PlayStation Network, and I'm thinking about buying it uh, just to or to play this weekend. Uh, I'm not sure yet, though. But m more than likely, I probably will. They're so tiny. Look at them on the video. They're so tiny. They're chippy versions. 
Fuzzy. Um, well, I never had a PlayStation 1, so it was a bit of a struggle. But the game that whenever I'd go to Sears and they had the PlayStation 1 set up with the demo <laughs> disc, <laughs> yep. I always played Crash Bandicoot. No idea why. Oh, I, I mean, it's fun. I, I don't know if it was the fact that I had the Nintendo 64 and I knew I was never going to get Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> but, yeah. The first Crash Bandicoot was fun, though. Mm-hmm. Then it went downhill from there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, favorite health restore item in a game? Fuzzy. Well, um, I've been playing what? some of the uh, Super Nintendo games I liked, and one of them that I've been playing is The Incredible Hulk. Now, those of you not familiar with the storyline behind The Incredible Hulk is David Banner has something done to his body where whenever he's around a certain kind of radiation, he gets big and green and angry and doesn't sell you vegetables like that other big green Hulk. Um, So what it comes down to is whenever you're fighting through the game and you have all these robots shooting at you, you're going to take some damage. You need to pick up health somehow. So there's little capsules of radiation just conveniently laying around. Just, you know, just right there by, by the telephone booth, by the bench, by the bus stop, in the sewer, on roofs of buildings. You just walk around, oh, look, oh, there's that radiation. So, th- so that. these things were essentially in places that they shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. Like, um, Considering that radiation capsules shouldn't really be strewn about the public <laughs> area, yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Oh man, I'm gonna go get a cheeseburger. Oh wait, there's a there's a gamma radiation capsule in my bag. Yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hulk up. <laughs> Bobby. Um I, I probably mentioned this on the Mayhem show before, but Andre the Giant had in re- in the first WrestleMania for the Nintendo, giant ham that would bounce across the ring. And you'd go over and pick it up, and he he would get health back. And I just always remember that because it always cracked me up. I was like, why would he have giant ham? Because <laughs> he's a big guy. Like, ham on the bone right there for Andre the Giant. Or else it was just like a giant fist with a muscle or something. But it looked like <laughs> ham. It was um, another another favorite of mine is, of course, the energy tanks in Mega Man because you couldn't get through the game without them, uh, especially during big boss battles. Just use an energy tank and... You're good to go. So I think uh, uh, mine are either the beer, the bottles of beer in uh, Shoot Many Robots, because that is just an awesome concept. Drink a beer, get your health back. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to apply that to my life and go to a bar. Profit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Or the, uh, the energy reserve tanks in uh, any of the Metroid games, because... Once again, you can't get through the game without them. It, I mean, you can, but it's just really difficult. Really, really, really difficult. Like, it, I wanted to go back and uh, cover something as soon as I find it. it, it we didn't bring up uh, Twisted Metal. Oh, yeah. As, Twisted Metal 2. As a good PlayStation game. Twisted Metal 2 is better than the first one. Because that one had the uh, cop, and I think the uh, indie car that could do the tornado thing. Yeah, yeah. Sorg, what yes. was your what was your favorite PlayStation game? PlayStation game. See, you know, my my earliest memories is PlayStation is like a friend of mine got it, and we got like he paid the what was it like four hundred bucks at the time and everything like that. Um, but I remember playing like the most ridiculous stuff. Like we were. Like, am I remember like jumping Flash? No. Which was like a Sounds demo familiar. on the original. It was just like you were like this robot- robotic uh, uh, rabbit, and I'm sure it was like super <laughs> slow by today's standards. But that was like, when, or did Destruction Derby was one that we would rent, and, and you know, back when the cases were just huge. Yeah. You know, just ridiculous. The <laughs> Blast Chamber was another one that was crazy. Jeez, um, I, I don't even know where to start with PlayStation One. 
You know, it, it just that that was a lot of the stuff that really just changed it. Wrestling games. Uh, those are the Fire first friend. ones. Like I remember all you know. I remember all of our friends just like making all these custom characters and all of mm-hmm. us like like for I think hours for hours. Yep. And I just can't even imagine doing that kind of stuff, even with like today's uh, versions of it. Yeah, you know, to make something that even remotely looks like us. You know, it, it just I it, I swear they spent more time making things like that than they did you know playing the game itself because really i mean warzone was pretty limited yes you know yeah so i think there was a version of fire pro for ps1 too that I there was there was uh, my cousin had it that was so. fun. all right boss fight boss fight <laughs> all right bobby set, yes set this one up okay this weekend uh riz myself uh, Kat and friend of the friend of the show Sarah take a drink uh, are <laughs> getting together for 24 hour video game a thon to uh, for the charity um, uh, Extra Life. It uh, be- benefits uh, not sold. Sorry, sir, you fail. You couldn't remember <laughs> it, it, the charity Extra Life. It benefits the uh, local children's hospital, uh, Pittsburgh Children's Hospital. I'm playing for. I know. Um, I think Kat's playing for Penn State. I'm not sure. Uh, and I don't know what Sarah's playing for, but uh, I think me and Riz are both playing for Pittsburgh uh, Children's Hospital. But uh, the question this week for the boss battle is, uh, seeing that our extralife.org 24-hour game gameathon is this weekend, what is the longest you've ever played a game, and what game was it? Frank. Well... About four weeks ago, I started playing World of Warcraft in a uh, South Korean uh, coffee shop for three days straight, and I died. But I'm back now. (laughs) That's what happened to you. (laughs) Aside from that instance, I'd say my best is about five, six hours, somewhere in around there. The thing that gets me is whenever the storyline is really fluid and just keeps reeling you in, um, Assassin's Creed is fantastic with that. Because they put so many cliffhangers on a bunch of the missions later in the game. Um, I know Assassin's Creed 2, when I got to like the last few levels, it was just nonstop. You just you couldn't put it down. Yeah. Uh, another one, just because I think it's the nature of the game, but um, Tropico 4, I've caught myself just sitting down, just playing for hours straight with that one. Uh, just because everything just kind of rolls together. There's no like, There's no break point. So when there's no break point, there's no chance for you to look at the clock and go, oh, I've been sitting here for three days in a South Korean cafe. Not good. (laughs) So yeah, about five, six hours for me. Uh, I'm getting motion from behind the the magical video boards of Destiny that Sorg actually has an answer for a question. Go ahead. Shinmu. Oh. (laughs) I don't know what the hell was so addicting you, about that game. You spent 14 like, I hours lost driving a forklift. Oh, dude. It was the most ridiculous stuff. Like, I'm, like, con- collecting the little bubble machine <laughs> things with the little Sonic the Hedgehogs in it and stuff. I, I'm i just, like, waiting for, like, oh, I get to fight now. Oh, I get to drive the forklift now. Oh, I need to go take the bus to the dock. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just... Something about that game just, like... Just, I could. I, I'm shaking the camera. Sorry about that. There's a, there's a forklift in Modern Warfare Three, but it's dead. Mm. Yeah, it's always it's always on its side. I feel bad. For you me. can't you can't drive that <laughs> forklift. Um, I, mine longest, uh, with one game, is probably, uh, Final Fantasy Seven, just because I was under time restrictions to get that back to where it belonged. Mm. Um. I borrowed it from a friend and I had to return it the next day. That's why that's why I blew through like Metal Gear Solid two in two weeks. Right. Oh, wow. just like, so I, I sat down overnight and I beat Final Fantasy seven and it was also summer during high school, so right. we had a job and stuff, but I thought we were out of it as like Metal Gear Solid two. Let's do this. <laughs> Video games. Go. <laughs> um but other than that, yeah, it probably just sitting down to play random uh, GTA threes or um uh, even our modern warfare set sessions. Yeah. I mean, those would go a good... One more game. One more game. Yeah, more game. a good four or five <laughs> hours each. So, I mean, I, 
it depends on uh, the situation, honestly. Because, mm -hmm. I, I mean, obviously, I, I, I can play video games for uh, 24 hours straight and... Yeah. I, well, yeah. I, I do, <laughs> but um, <laughs> you, you've done it before. Yeah. At least once a year. <laughs> yeah, at least once a year. I I sit down and I play video games for twenty four hours straight. So, I mean, it, yeah. But yeah, the longest single game straight was probably a good twelve, thirteen hours on Final Fantasy Seven. Hmm. So, go ahead, Bobby. Um, Mine would be Rampage. I played it for eight hours, and of course got the uh, "Thank you for playing" screen when I beat it, and then the game started over, and I rage quit as a, a seven or eight year old. How how sad! Uh, <laughs> how sad did it make you that you you played that game for that long, and yeah. that was the screen that you got? Devastating. <laughs> like, hey, did you punch? Did you punch something? You... I don't know what I did. I, I think I threw the controller down. I was like, I hate this game. And then <laughs> now I look back fondly on the game, except for that moment. Um, another one was, uh, I know you're going to hit me for this, Chachi, but Final Fantasy X, I would play in high school for hours upon hours trying to get through the game. Uh, yeah, more, like you said, Modern Warfare 3 uh, or in Modern Warfare 2, we used to, when that first came out, we were up playing endless hours of the night. And uh, this weekend, I'm hoping Skyrim or uh, Borderlands 2. Probably going to play that a lot. <laughs> so, we'll see. Maybe Naughty Bear. Naughty Bear. <laughs> That's just fun to say. Naughty Sword, Bear. what's the chat room have to say? From the chat room, we got a few responses going on here. Of course, Riz, uh, well, you know, back on that other discussion, he said, Pain Pills and Max Payne. Yeah, those were oh, good yeah. ones too. Yeah, that was good ones. That was yeah. good ones. Um, didn't the they most... affect you if you started taking too many of them? Uh, yeah, a little they, bit. Well, I, d I thought that the pain pills were the ones that put you into bullet time. Mm, no, I think it was general health. Oh, okay. So, um, and uh, Zelda uh, Ocarina of Time. I think I spent mm. five to six hours when I first got it. Uh, Bo Diggity says used to go do four hours minimum, ten p.m. to two a.m. I think he's talking about Modern Warfare. Oh yeah. Oh. Uh, Street Fighter Two back in the day. I beat the game with every character. <laughs> I don't know what that other thing is. Um, Bonnie Bear. <laughs> I don't know why he's talking about Bonnie Bear. <laughs> he wants us to go to sleep. <laughs> I'm gonna put you to sleep. Uh, oh, and... oh, another thing. My friend Josh and I would play uh, Mario Kart endlessly, and we did um, the mushroom, uh, the, all th all the cups together, and we timed it to the first killer CD, and it timed out perfectly. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's just perfectly. Were you high when you did that? <laughs> no, it, it's like it's like uh, Wizard of Oz and. Uh, and uh, Dark Side of the Moon. To uh, to go back to the discussion of uh, friends of ours spending way too long on a video game. I, you remember when the MTV Music Generator came out, mm -hmm. and how much time a, a, just a group of us in high school would spend on that <laughs> game? Dude, alone. I, somebody. Uh, well, the one guy didn't he use some of the tracks he made from that? Yeah, like in his music. Yeah. Like, they actually outputted it to a computer so they could record to it. Yes. Like, that that was how he generated beats. Was I, with... Like, I ended up picking him because, like, we, we were in the rap group. But, like, I knew I knew the dude with me would could make beats. Like, he had the mind for it. And mm -hmm. I'm like, the guy, and I try, I even gave him a computer. I was like, here, use this. Try to use assets. See if you can learn it and figure it out. I even just went and bought him, like, it was uh, the Def Jam one. Yeah. For like PS because music generator was PS one, right? Right. And it was and I'm just like here, you know, like there's a PlayStation two game, you know. See if you can make beats out of it. Maybe it'll give us something to start with. It was just like that you would with that interface with a controller like that, that's ridiculous. Yeah, it's insane. Especially versus what we have in like garage band now. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I honestly, and not just the music, but the video to go with the music. I mean, it got to the point where everyone playing would have their own VHS cassette that we rec would record them from the TV. <laughs> that way, we didn't take up Ridiculous. all of the room on the uh, the memory card. Oh, so you have them uh, uh, securely so identified. Uh, yeah, I securely <laughs> kept on a VHS tape. Somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere. Wasn't there, wasn't Somewhere. there a game called Amplitude 2 that did that? 
Uh, no, that was more of a. That's it was, yeah, it was like Guitar Hero. Before actually, guitar wasn't hero. that was uh, the same guy? It was Harmonix, wasn't it? Yeah, like that. Yeah. That was Guitar Hero before it was Guitar Hero. Yeah, it was basically before they had a guitar, I think. So yeah, they just used a controller, and I remember that game. Oh man, the amount of time we spent on creating games <laughs> is just insane. And uh, one more game that I wanted to bring up for. Uh, PlayStation before we, we end the show, Monster Rancher. Mm-hmm. Did you ever spend any time with Monster Rancher? That's one where you could put another game in. No, generate. not just games. Maybe you would CD. You would put the disc in and you would start the disc. My nephew was bigger than that game. You, you would you would run around the house gathering up all of the, the CDs and DVDs that you could find in your house and <laughs> it, it would generate monsters based upon what it was. And like the weaker, the weaker the uh, the CD, and I I know because I put in like a uh, an REM CD or something, <laughs> the weaker the monster. <laughs> um, from the chat room, uh, I feel like Bug Diggity put this in there. Big Crit speaks on how he got started producing. He first made beats on a PlayStation. <laughs> See. <laughs> It's not the only... I mean, it was a legitimate music-making site. It's what you have accessible to you. Right, so... For your creative output. (laughs) Going Uh, back to that monster game, uh I wonder what what Alanis Morissette's Jagged Little Pill would have been like. (laughs) (laughs) I bet I had a badge. That would have been fun. Badge with teeth. (laughs) It would have been the... (laughs) Vampire (laughs) pussy! (laughs) 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 (laughs)